Okay, let's continue our journey here through polynomial land. Uh, um, we're going to continue talking about polynomial functions here. Uh, I want to mention a few things. Um, you would probably get more out of these videos if you use that pause button a lot and try to answer the question on your own before you look at the solution. I think it's a good idea. Uh, I like these problems right here. I like to ask these on, on quizzes and tests. I'm always looking for things around my house, so this is this is no different. Um, find a polynomial function that satisfies all the following conditions. It has to have degree two. It's like a scavenger hunt, isn't it? Like a scavenger hunt. It has to have degree two. It has two real zeros here and here, and f of two is negative four. Okay, well, if you just plug in, remember, if you know the real zeros, you can factor it, right? If negative two is a zero, the next plus two is a factor, and similarly, x minus three is a factor. Don't assume the coefficient's one, though. You've got to put a constant here. We'll call it a. How do you find that constant? Well, you plug in the fact that f of two is negative four. So when you plug in, so you set the function equal to negative four, you plug in two for x, so you get a times, this becomes a four, this becomes a negative one. It, lo and behold, a turns out to be positive one, but don't assume it's always going to be positive one. Usually it's not. So there's your function, right there. So, again, like try try these on your own. Don't don't wait for me. Um, polynomial function f has degree three. X intercepts at zero. Okay, it has multiplicity two. Remember what that means? That means you have a x is being squared, and it has a um, it has a zero at three. Well, since the degree is three, this would have to have multiplicity one, wouldn't it? Because the sum of the degrees has to be three. Anyway, so f of two is one. So let's start off like this f of x is a times x squared, because it have multiplicity 2 at 0, times x minus 3. Plug in the fact that f of 2 is 1. You set y equal to 1. You plug in 2 for x. You get 4 times negative 1. In this case, a becomes negative 1 fourth. So that the function looks, looks like this, negative 1 fourth x squared times x minus 3. So again, go ahead and hit the pause button and try these on your own, and then see how I did it. f has degree 5. OK, degree 5 polynomial. The only zeros are at 1, multiplicity 3, and then it has a 0 at negative 2. Huh. What would the multiplicity have to be there? It would have to be 2, wouldn't it? Because the degree is 5, so and f of 0 is negative 4. So you start off like this. a times x minus 1 cubed times x plus 2 squared. Plug in, uh, set, negative, set y equal to negative 4, and plug in... Um, 0 for x, so you get negative 1 here and 4 here. And so that means that a has to equal 1 again. again don't count on a being always 1 though, so this is, this is your polynomial function right here. Okay, let's go the other way now. Suppose I give you the graph, and I want you to f find a possible function. I don't know, these might be easier for some people. Well, this is obviously going to be, well, it's not obvious, but it says a possible formula, first of all. There might be more than one answer, okay? But I was about to say it's obviously a quadratic function, but it could, in theory, it might be a fourth degree. You don't really know, but let's let's assume it's a second degree polynomial function. So in that case, you'd have a factor here. Uh, uh, so that this this becomes x plus three is a factor, and x minus two is a factor. Now, how do you find a? You would find a by using the other point. The point happens. That's not the Weiner set, by the way. That's just a point. You'd plug. Um, 0 for x, and you would plug in um, 3 for y. So you plug in 3 for y, plug in 0 for x, you get this. In this case, a becomes negative 1 half, right? So there's your answer. All right, try, try this one. Here's a third degree polynomial function. See if you can, uh, see if you can find the possible formula for that one. So let's see. You have a 0 at negative 4, 0, and 3. So these, this is, these are your factors to find a. By the way, let me ask you this question. Is a going to be positive or ne negative? Look at look at the in behavior of this graph here. Uh, it, it's behaving kind of like a negative x cubed, so you would just think that maybe a is going to be negative, right? Hope so. And anyway, when you plug in the information, when x is 1, y is 10, you get this, and so a turns out to be negative 1, sure enough. Isn't this fun? I knew you'd like this. Try this one. This one appears to be a polynomial function of degree... What do you think the degree is of this one? Look at the end behavior. Turns out it's degree four. Furthermore, 
you see how that's a turning point? Remember we talked about that last last time. When you have an x-intercept that's a turning point, you mean you have even multiplicity. So you've got even multiplicity at what looks like negative 3, uh, and then this would be an x factor of x here and x minus 1. So that's how you would start. And then to find a, you, let's plug in the point negative 1, 4. I get, I get a, you might have to hit the pause button on this one, I get a equal 1 half. You can check me on that. And then here, uh, try this one too. See if you can do this one. This looks like a polynomial function perhaps of degree 3. See if you can find a possible form for this one. Well, again, you, you should have observed that it looks like even multiplicity at 3, so you're going to have a, a factor of x minus 3 squared. Looks like it goes to the origin. A is going to be negative, definitely, because it looks like uh, more like negative x cubed, right? So when you, when you find A, you should have got a negative number. It turns out on this one, I got A equal negative 1. Again, you can check me on that. Anyway, uh, one, one thing... Um, one thing I wanted you to observe on these are the number of turning points. The turning points would be local max or min. So um, this has two turning points, right? Uh, it's degree three. This has how many turning points? This has three turning points. It's, it turns out to be degree four. So we're going to talk about this more in class, but another observation is that if you have a polynomial function of degree n, it can have at most n minus one turning points or local extrema. Uh, 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 does does it have to have n minus 1? No, of course not. Uh, x cubed, for example, has no turning points. x to the fourth only has one turning point, so it can have at most n minus 1 turning points. Linear functions have no turning points, right? All quadra quadratic functions have one turning point. So this is why we say at most. All right, so um, so let's. this is kind of a fun problem. How about this one? I'm asking you a question like this. What is the what is a possible degree for this polynomial function? Go ahead, hit the pause button and think about that. Okay, well, it looks, look at the end behavior first of all. You should have observed it, it's going to have an, it's going to be, as, and I shouldn't say asymptotic, it's, it, it's going to have the same end, end behavior as a odd power function, right? How many turning points do you see? One, two, three, four. So I would say one possibility would be five, although seven might be possible too, right? Calculators are important in my in my class, um, and one thing that is hard for students, um, I know from 141, is is it's just entering a, a function and getting a good window for it. So let's practice that a little bit. In my in my class, what what do I mean by a, a good view window? Well, I want to see the axes, x and y axis. If there's any x intercepts, I want to see it. Most importantly, I want to see the complete graph. If it has a bunch of squiggles in it, I don't want it to look like a line. And then about 10 to 20 tick tick marks on each axis. So I'm going to ask you to do this on, by, by yourself. Go ahead and get your TI cal calculator out. Go ahead, enter, enter this function on your TI and see if you can get a good graph for it. Hit the pause button. Okay, here's a hint. Here's a hint. The graph should look like that. So hit the pause button again. See if you can make your window so the graph looks kind of like that. Isn't that a nice function? I love that function. Anyway. The window that I chose was negative 10 to 10 and negative 100 to 100. Okay, we've got time for one more here. Same, same thing. Go ahead, enter this function on your TI. Enter this function on your TI and see if you can find a good window for it. Okay, here's a hint. The window, the, the graph should look kind of like that. So go ahead, hit, if you haven't got that yet, go ahead, hit the pause button again and see if you can make the graph look like that. Anyway, the window that I chose was um, negative 20 to 50 on x and negative uh, 20,000 to 60,000 on y. Alrighty, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.